All right, Bones, today we're going to look at some pretty cool stuff. Today we're going to look at some technology that we use to monitor the weather, okay, and some pretty cool looking storms that we have to deal with here in our country, okay? Um, so this is pretty cool. You ready to go, Bones? All right, let's go. All right, so what kind of technology or instruments have we already talked about throughout this unit that we need to review a little bit? So here's some of the instruments and what they measure that you really need to know. Okay, and you should know this for as you're growing up in, in everyday life. So, so let's remember, temperature is measured with a thermometer, okay? Pretty simple. A lot of them are digital now. You have them on your phone. A lot of people have weather apps that you can look up. You can look up a lot of this stuff on your weather apps that you download on your phone. But remember, there was the original thermometer that we used to be uh, have to read um, on the wall all the time. We also have something called a barometer that measures the air pressure, okay? Uh, high pressure is associated with nice weather. Remember, high pressure, happy weather, cold and dry. Low pressure, lousy weather, warm and wet. Here's a picture of a barometer right here, an old school one. So, uh, your parents may have one hanging on the wall. I know I do at my house. Then we have a psychrometer. Okay, this measures the humidity and dew point. This is what a psychrometer looks like here. Okay, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Basically, a psychrometer is two thermometers, a wet bulb and a dry bulb on a stick. And you spin the stick around and then you compare what the temperatures are on a chart and you get to see what the humidity is outside and how sticky it is. Um, we have an anometer. This is what an anometer is right here that measures wind speed. It's like a pinwheel. So the faster the wind blows, the faster it registers the, the, the wind speed. We have something called a wind vane, okay? That tells us the direction that wind is coming from. You see them in classic movies and cartoons. You see wind vanes on top of barns and stuff so that they know which direction the wind is coming from. Sometimes there's chickens and roosters on there. This one has a horse. And then we have a rain gauge which is simply a, a graduated cylinder, a tube that you stick outside that catches the water when it rains and it fills up and then you see how much it rained. That's all it is. So these are some of the more simple tools that we've used to, or instruments that we've used to um, monitor the weather in the past. Things have gotten a lot more sophisticated since this stuff. So we're gonna take a look at some other instruments and technology that now we use uh, in order to um, predict the weather. One of the cool new things that we use, um, it's not even new anymore, are weather balloons, okay? Weather balloons is just that. It is a balloon, okay, that slowly drifts upward into the atmosphere and there's a computer attached to the bottom. And as the computer goes up into the air and the weather balloon moves around in the atmosphere and blows with the wind, the computer takes all of the atmospheric variables that we've talked about, temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind direction, uh, pressure, all of that stuff, it absorbs it into the computer and sends that information back to our weather station computers for us to be able to develop different types of weather maps. Okay, so this is what's known as a weather balloon. They set the balloon up to the bottom of it, it's attached as a computer. They chase after the balloon, it comes back down and they get their computer back, okay? Now out in the oceans, okay, we have these things called buoys because we have to measure the weather out in the oceans too. Everybody has seen a buoy before, okay? These buoys just have a computer that are, uh, is attached to it and does the same thing as the weather balloon. It takes in the air temperature, the wind speed, the air pressure, the humidity, everything that's going out on the water. It, it processes it and sends that data um, to weather stations or big mainframe computers back on land for us to see what the weather is like happening out on the ocean because the weather out on the ocean affects what is happening to the weather on land. So we've got weather balloons and buoys um, which is just basically using computers to analyze the weather and send back that data to us. What's going on? We also are now using satellites. We have got lots of satellites orbiting the earth right now. Now satellites are really cool. All right. Satellites can actually give us pictures and show us cloud cover and how the clouds are moving around the earth. So here's a typical satellite that's orbiting around the earth and um, the pictures that they can send to us. So we can really see where the storms are forming. This is very helpful when, when looking at hurricanes move across the land and big thunderstorms moving across the land because um, it shows the cloud cover and how the, the spiral of the hurricane will start to, uh, start to form, all right? So um, satellite photography is really cool um, in being able to predict where a storm is going to move, how it's moving, how fast it's moving, all of that information that uh, can be relayed to us through our news stations to help us prepare for the different storms if they're coming into our area. 
okay? Obviously computers, computers are the new age of the world. Computers collect and store large amounts of data so we can compare the weather from the past to the weather from the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the present. So we can try to predict the weather in the future. Computer allows for massive amounts of data to be analyzed very, very quickly, better than we ever have before. And we're getting better and better at predicting the weather all the time. And um, whether we can predict uh, whether, sometimes there's, we can predict whether that will help people save their lives in a matter of minutes. If a tornado is going to form and the weather conditions are starting to um, present themselves where a tornado may form, warning people in the area that in tornado alley in the middle of our country that could be the the difference between life or death so computers have really made a great impact in predicting the weather are they always right in predicting the weather absolutely not but it we have gotten a lot more accurate at predicting the intensity of storms the timing of storms and how the storms are going to affect people to give them fair warning in order to prepare for the future uh, even now, we can we know when we're going to get a blizzard a day or two ahead of it so we can get to the grocery store, so we can get our snow plows ready, so we can get generators available and be really be prepared to hunker down for a couple of days in the case of an extreme blizzard or something like that, even in our area. Now, one of the coolest things that is, is fa fairly new within the past 20 years is the use of radar and the Doppler radar. Um, the Doppler radar, and, and if you have weather apps, this picture should look very familiar to you, um, tells you not only that a storm is coming, but the intensity of it. And it usually color codes it for you. So here, the red parts of our storm are more intense than the green and the blue parts of our storm. Okay, uh, Doppler radar is amazing. It actually sends out radar that bounces off every single water droplet that is falling from the sky and sends those radar images back in order for them to produce graphics like this in real time, right on your phones. I know I have like three, three weather apps on my phone with different radars that I go back and forth through as storms are coming through or I'm trying to predict the weather that I go through and I love them all. Um, so uh, Doppler radar helps you give the intensity, the speed and the shape of the storm very specifically because it's actually bouncing radar off the water droplets that are falling from the sky and sending it back to a computer in your apps to generate these different cool pictures. Um, very cool, definitely. I highly recommend downloading some free weather apps um, that will help you look at the weather and predict the weather that you may need. It's definitely really cool. I like it. Now, what are some of the, the storms that we're aware of and that, that we know of that we deal with in our country? Okay, the, the first one is a tornado. Okay, this is what a tornado looks like. And if you haven't seen the movie Twister, I highly recommend uh, checking out the movie Twister. It's all about tornadoes. It's got a lot of really cool science stuff in it um, that's going to teach you a lot, but it's action packed. It's really cool. You don't even realize you're watching a science movie on tornadoes. You just feel like you're watching an action movie. It's really cool. So check out Twister. Um, so a tornado is a rapidly rotating wind. That's what it does. It, it happens under extremely low pressure. Okay, remember what happens with low pressure. Low pressure, lousy weather, warm and wet. So we get a, a funnel that starts to um, form. And this funnel has wind speeds that are very destructive. Okay, this happens when cold air meets very warm air um, in a tight knit space. So a common place, we call it Tornado Alley, is in the Midwest Plains, where cold air from Canada comes down and meets the warm air from the Gulf of Mexico. So right in the breadbasket of America, okay, right in the middle, the Midwest, like I said, we have an area called Tornado Alley where people have tornado cellars that they have to get down in and big sirens go off when there is um, a tornado watch going on. So people really have to be prepared. Tornadoes can be very destructive. They could rip your house right out of the ground um, and throw it. Uh, and it has before. Um, the one side of the street can get hit by a tornado and, and gets destroyed. The other side of the street doesn't hit the tornado and, uh, and it's totally fine. They actually have tornado chasers out there that get in their cars and chase these tornadoes around to try to study them and learn from them. And again, that, that's all in the movie Twister. So I highly recommend Twister if you haven't seen it yet. Very good movie. Um, now tornadoes, uh, they're very unpredictable. Okay, they're erratic. They can change direction. They can go left, right. They can go forward. They can turn around and go backwards. They can last a few minutes or they can last a few hours. They could be small, they could be big. Um, it's very unpredictable and, and very dangerous. So if you live in Tornado Alley, if you live in the Midwest, there are certain things that those people do, which we'll talk about to be prepared for tornado at any time. So the big one is the tornado cellar, 
which is a basement for them to go to as a tornado is going over their head. So how fast is the wind of a tornado moving? It's moving pretty fast. So we categorize this using the, uh, using this scale here, and we have from a F zero to an F five tornado. Okay. So if you have an F zero tornado funnel, that's a light, it's going to cause light damage and the wind speed isn't too bad, 40 to 73 miles per hour. Okay. You can handle that. And F1 starts to get a bit more dangerous now. Okay, we got 74 miles per hour to 112 miles per hour. That will cause moderate damage. That will definitely rip apart your fences, um, can make a car slide around, different things like that. And F2, 113 to 157 miles per hour. You need to take cover now. Okay, uh, you need to you need to find a safe space to hunker down um, because this can be very destructive. Now this can start ripping roofs uh, your, your roofs off your house. Um, and do considerable damage to your property and the area that you're staying in. Um, F3, 158 to 206. F4, 207 to 260. F5, forget about it. Okay, that's all I'm going to say is forget about it. Uh, go up to 318 miles per hour. This is incredibly destructive. If your area is getting hit with an F5, uh, please stay safe. Uh, hold on to something tight. Strap yourself down to some pipes that go deep into the the ground, get into a, a basement or a, a tornado cellar, get out of the area because the area that it touches, it's going to get damaged. So what do you do if a tornado starts to hit and what, what does it look like? Seek low shelter immediately. Okay. Cover your head and body. If that means if you don't have a basement to go into, get into the bathtub, pull a, a mattress over your head. It's not the best situation to do, but as debris is flying all around, if debris hits the mattress, at least it's not hitting you. You don't want a spike of a fence to go through you. You'd rather it hit the mattress and bounce off. Um, so you want to cover your head and body and find the, the, the best spots in your house. Uh, door, door wells, hopefully you have a basement. Like I said, if you don't have uh, a door or a basement, you should have a door in a house. Uh, you can even get in a bathtub and pull a mattress over you. Um, you can see a tornado went through here. So this is the part that the tornado, the tornadoes are very specific. So tornadoes destroyed this area here, but on the outside of the lines, these houses were saved and these houses were saved. So tornado only destroys what it touches, okay? Which is kind of interesting and terrifying at the same time. Um, so again, definitely, I'll say it again, check out the movie Twister. We also have thunderstorms. We don't get too many tornadoes here in New York, so you guys don't have to worry. Thunderstorms we do get, okay, usually forms along cold fronts, uh, causes rising, uh, rising air from cumulus clouds, causes static electricity, which is lightning. We've all seen lightning. We've all seen lightning storms. Um, and we can get some hail that, that falls, which is basically uh, balls of ice falling from the sky. This is a big one. Uh, we don't tend to get these, this big of hailstones here in New York. We'll get smaller ones, but even smaller ones can be destructive. They can fall on your car. They can crack windshields, um, different things like that. So Thunderstorms are what they are. We're used to them here in New York. A lot of rain, lightning, thunder, okay, usually caused around fronts. And we know what happens with fronts. Fronts, we get stormy weather. So thunderstorms are something we're used to here on Long Island. Um, depending on where you live, uh, some of the effects of thunderstorms, we can get flash floods, hail, strong wind, and lightning. Okay, I've seen some areas, especially along the South Shore and North Shore, that end up looking like this. There are flood areas and storm surges where the water will come up in high tide and, and flood an area, flood a road, uh, flood a, um, a town. Um, what should you do in the case of a bad thunderstorm? Seek shelter indoors, stay off the phone because um, electricity can go through wires. If you're if somewhere around your house is struck by lightning, you, can, uh, you, you do have circuit breakers in your house that if there's an electrical impulse, it will shut off, hit the circuit breaker and you'll be safe, but you don't wanna get electrocuted. Uh, don't use the water, turn off your appliances just because you want to save your appliances. You don't want to short, you don't want a fire to start. Again, if a strike of lightning um, ends up by your house somewhere and stay away from flood prone areas, okay? Oh, again, we live in New York. We've dealt with thunderstorms before. We know how to deal with them. Um, so just keep that kind of safety stuff in mind. Another thing that we deal with here are uh, blizzards. We've all experienced blizzards before, all right? Um, the past few winters haven't been too bad, but we, a few winters before that were bad with blizzards and, and ice storms. Okay. We can have whiteout conditions, which means you can't see, uh, along with uh, blizzards, we get power outages, phone outages, 
we get snow drifts. Um, it is uh, sometimes difficult for medical uh, services to get to you because of the storms. Uh, you can get frostbite and hypothermia if you get caught out in a blizzard or an ice storm and you have to deal with wind chills. All right, so just stay indoors, have plenty of food and supplies ready, don't drive. Um, and we'll talk about some other safety tips that you need in case a winter storm goes through, a blizzard. Um, things you should always have on supply just in case you are stuck in your house for a few days at a time. I think the longest I've ever been stuck in my house after a blizzard, it's been about a week. Um, so you need plenty of food and you need your medicines and, and your, your medications and, and any important paperwork, maybe some cash in case ATM machines aren't working and credit cards aren't working, you can't get somewhere for a store. So we'll talk about that in a bit. This is pretty cool. This has actually happened to my car before. I was in Port Jefferson. I'll tell you a little story. Um, I was parked, I was in a class and I, my car was parked outside during a, a cold kind of winter storm. And the uh, water from the Long Island Sound was splashing up the mist was splashing up over my car and my car ended up looking like this. I couldn't get in. I had to wait till the next day. I had to go thaw it out. Um, I had to call somebody to come pick me up. It was kind of embarrassing, but it is what it is. So uh, these things, you don't think this, this, this isn't even about water coming and splashing up over the side. This is just the mist of the water that can freeze and, and make things very difficult uh, in life in general. Just another picture of what a winter storm could look like and the damages it can cause. This was what can cause your electrical power outages. Okay, so then we have to wait for the electric companies to go out there and fix it. So you want to be prepared in case you're without electricity or power for a few days. All right, um, because winter storms can be pretty destructive and we deal with them here on Long Island. We also deal with hurricanes. Uh, we haven't had one in a while. This is, uh, we're in 2021 now. I don't know how we haven't, knock on wood, we haven't had a hurricane in a little while. Um, this is what it looks like from a satellite image. Pretty cool. I think they look cool. Um, they can be pretty destructive. Um, this is a low, low pressure system that forms over a tropical ocean. Okay. Winds are higher than 74 miles per hour. They cause flooding, high waves, storm surges, everything we talked about with a, a, a thunderstorm, but even more destructive. Um, you, you have your eye of the storm here, which sometimes you can even go out outside in, but hurricanes with the winds being that high, they can pull trees out of, out of, uh, out of, out of the ground. They can fall across your road. They can fall into houses, sheds. I've seen that all happen. So, uh, we're going to talk about some safety supplies to have ready, um, in a, in a minute here. Um, after we go through all the, the different kinds of storms that we actually encounter here in New York and on Long Island. Uh, hurricane Katrina was one of the worst hurricanes ever to hit our country. Um, happened in 2005. It was a category four, which is a pretty big category. Um, you can see here that there was a lot of damage. A lot of people lost power. A lot of people were left homeless uh, when it hit, when it came through the, the Gulf and hit New Orleans. Um, it was very destructive. Um, I have some pictures here of what it looked like before and after. So here's New Orleans before the hurricane. You can see it's very dry. Um, nothing really to worry about. This is what it would look like on a normal day. No big deal. But then after Hurricane Katrina hit, you can see where the water flooded. So take a look at that. So all of this is flooding. And even a satellite image doesn't give you justice. It doesn't give you a real view of how high that water was um, when Hurricane Katrina hit, hit land. So this is, this, is pretty, this is better. You can see the water went up to their rooftops. Yeah, these houses were all destroyed. People were actually on top of their roofs and helicopters were trying to fly in to try to save people. Um, people were on boats going down the middle of the roads in order to try to save people. Um, and there's animals in the water. This is Louisiana. There's alligators and crocodiles, so you can't just swim for it. Um, you had, it people, a lot of people had to be saved and, and were bunkered down and, and just sitting on top of their rooftops. Waiting to be waiting to be saved. It was uh, it was pretty bad. Here's another another look at it, more of a side view. I mean, this uh, Louisiana, the entire city was just underwater. It was it was unbelievable. Um, one of the one of the worst hurricanes, if not the worst hurricane ever to hit the United States. Uh, we're still recovering from it. Uh, nor'easters. This is another storm that we come in contact with. We have nor'easters here on Long Island all the time. Uh, you get some heavy rain or snow. It causes a lot of beach erosion. Um, you can get some hurricane force winds. 
it doesn't necessarily, we don't call it a hurricane necessarily because it doesn't form that spiral. Um, but it's just a really bad storm that hits with either rain or snow it could cause flooding, beach erosion, power outages, um, different stuff like that. This is, this looks like a very familiar site if you, especially out on the, if you live near the coast here on Long Island of what, what a nor'easter can do to your home. Um, we've seen images of this. This is, this looks very similar. All right. To things that we experience here on Long Island when nor'easters go through. If you've ever been to the beach uh, on a stormy day, it's actually it could be pretty cool. There's certain beauty in it as long as you stay safe. Um, uh, this is Fire Island. This is uh, one of the islands where the, the ocean actually broke through during a nor'easter, um, our barrier island. So what are some things that you need to do if uh, a storm is coming? Okay, well, whichever kind of storm this is. Number one, have food, water, and medication and cash on hand. Okay, you may be not be able to get to a drugstore to get your medications if you're on some sort of medication for some for some for something. Make sure you have food that's going to last you a couple days and fresh water. If your water supply gets cut, um, you need some bottled water in order to uh, to drink and to cook food in. And make sure you have cash on hand. If it's a bad enough storm, banks are not going to be open. ATM machines are not going to be available. Um, people, credit card machines are not going to work, even if the store is open. So make sure you have cash on hand. Have your personal papers be uh, prepared. Um, a will, okay, um, bank documents, uh, anything like that. Um, know your evacuation routes, okay? Where, if they say you need to be evacuated from your home, how are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Um, if you hear that a hurricane watch is coming or a nor'easter watch, that means it's time to get prepared. And if you hear a warning, that means it's coming. So listen to your local weather, look your local news channels, and just follow their direction to stay as safe as possible, okay? So that was a big one. That was a lot. We covered a lot there, a lot of storms, a lot of technology, and a lot of what to do if those storms hit you. All right. So I hope you learned a lot, and I hope we don't really have to deal with these storms too much that are very destructive. All right. You good, Bones? A little scary? You good? All right. I think he's good. What'd you say? Oh, he said go watch Twister. You'll like it. Trust me. <laughs>